So let's talk now about the Glide AI Toolkit and cover the two most important principles when building with AI and Glide, and that's structured data and chaining. Businesses generally operate with both structured data and unstructured data, and processes usually involve information moving between these types. Structured data are things like databases, spreadsheets, and CRM systems, and unstructured data are things like documents, images, and files. Generally speaking, structured data is much more valuable to a business because it's easier to analyze, ensures consistency, it's more accurate, improves efficiency, and it's just generally easier to integrate and do stuff with. Many slow and outdated processes in business operations are actually due to a lack of structured data. Think paper records and notes, photos of scanned images, WhatsApp messages, printed invoices, things like that. Transforming unstructured data into structured formats within your workflows can significantly enhance efficiency, accuracy, and decision-making. And obviously with a data-driven tool like Glide, it makes perfect sense. Now, a lot of the Glide AI tools in both the data and action editors are designed specifically to help you turn unstructured inputs into structured outputs. So the AI features in the data and action editors are these very discrete, powerful tools that are designed to help you do a very specific thing. They abstract away all of the complexity of choosing and tuning models, working with APIs, and instead just give you access to the best AI for the job. In fact, your AI actually gets better over time as we update the models in the back end. That's also a thing that you just don't need to think about. And because all of this complexity is managed for you, you're freed up to think much more creatively about how you combine and chain these things together. And as you do this, there are therefore three main ways to think about Glide AI. Extracting data, structuring data, and generating data. Extracting data is where you essentially digitize things or turn things into text. Image to text, audio to text, and document to text are the main ones. Next, you retrieve information from that unstructured data and then turn it into structured data. For example, finding key dates, decisions, or statuses, or asking the AI to pass the data and make a choice on how to categorize it. And then finally, there's the generate text feature, which is where you can really get AI to do whatever it is that you need and more flexibly work with this reasoning thinking power of the model. For example, in this app here, we can upload some documentation, the app will summarize it and automatically add it to a category within the app. The features being used here are the image to text column, the generate text column, the text choice column, and then a normal relation column. So obviously we went through that pretty quickly. We're gonna go into much more depth with the examples later in the course, but the point here was just to show or introduce this idea of chaining. Now, the interesting thing here is that this chain was actually fairly short. You can end up with much more long and powerful and somewhat complex chains of AI columns, AI actions, and computer columns all feeding into each other. Really, it's very flexible depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Now, one thing worth noting is that we also did this all in the data editor. We could have done the exact same thing with like a workflow. So why would we choose one or the other? Well, let's break that open a bit. Many times you'll find that you can build the exact same kind of functionality with columns in the data editor or with actions in the workflow editor. So why would you pick one over the other? AI columns live within your tables. They operate dynamically at the row level, meaning that they continually update as either new data is added or existing data changes. For example, an AI column categorizing text will reevaluate and update its categorization whenever the text in a row changes, or perform a new categorization whenever a new row is added. Now, this continuous adaptability ensures that really your data is always being accurately processed and up to date but it could also mean that very subtle changes to your data might trigger very unwanted updates in AI columns down the chain. AI actions, on the other hand, are just like normal actions. They are event-driven. They're designed to execute a single time based on triggers that you define. They're really ideal for tasks that need to be performed once or in a more controlled manner, or for actions that you want to happen just when someone interacts with your app in a certain way. For example, you might set up an AI action to send an email or generate a report or perform a complex calculation only when a particular button is pressed or condition is met. It also means that the data that lands in your tables is editable. And this is a really important point when building systems with AI is if you want humans to be in the loop, to check, 
change and update the data that the AI outputs, you're nearly always going to want to go this route where you're inputting data to a table that's editable.